Let's discuss. Hey everyone, it's Rachel back again with another video and today I'm going to be checking out a new track from Tesseract. It is the title track taken from their newly announced upcoming record which will be out on September 15th. I have covered a bit of Tesseract on the channel, done a lot more diving into their discography off camera as well. A very cool band. It was one that I got put onto by starting my YouTube channel uh, from liking bands like The Contortionist and uh, various prog bands. A tesseract was a name I had heard a lot before, but really did not jump into until this channel. So it's neat to see a new song from them. I'm excited to cover it. I will link all the pre-orders for the album, the video or visualizer I'll be using in the reaction portion of this, all of that stuff in the description of this video. Other than that, I'm going to stop talking and we are going to get straight into it. That is an intro. Bendy as hell, too. That bass sounds insane! Groove down, baby! Oh, 
Oh, wow. Ooh, I got chills there. Range goes crazy. Drums here make the mix feel super wide. What is that noise? Huge sound of the song, huge music video as well. Oh, they're not done fighting, which means. Obviously, there was no conclusion. <laughs>
<laughs> That's probably my favorite part right there, that bit. Tesseract, War of Being, let's discuss. It's hard to do a track like this justice in an outro because there is so much that happens in this 10, 11 minutes of music, but we'll probably circle back and talk a little bit more about the track when I do an album video when that comes out in September. But I'm gonna do my best to, to mention everything that I can. The vocal performance would definitely be the first thing to, to jump into for me. It is just a huge performance here. There is a ton that we can sit here and talk about. We could probably do an hour long outro just picking apart some of the, the vocal character some of the choices that they made on this song also the way it flaunts daniel tompkins voice he is one of the things that really got me interested in the band and the first songs i listened to from tesseract and stuff that was just a huge point of attention drawing for me it was around the vocals and this track feels like one of the best i've heard from a vocal perspective from this band there is you know lighter breathier moments there are moments that are huge and have a ton of grit to them and a lot of variation and style that you're getting and with a 10 or 11 minute track that can be really important i don't think that it's a necessity there are bands who can take a 10 or 11 minute track and, and keep it somewhat engaging but this felt thoroughly engaging throughout the entire thing it did not feel like a 10 or 11 minute track to me uh, because there was just so much going on it feels like an incredibly epic track it has visuals that match it i do hope that there's like a continuation or something because the story did feel a little bit uh, like there were uh, some holes in the story there but the visuals looked really cool it looks very well done so that kind of matches the the epic sound that's brought otherwise uh, so it's epic sounding you have the visuals to match it i guess is, is more of what i meant there but it's not just a vocal thing for me either the way the instrumentation can can adapt to a voice when you have such a big vocalist you have to be able to bring the intensity with your instrumentation as well or it's just it's it's a waste it and this band feels like they truly do that there are so many moments where i'm like oh wow, that riff is super bouncy. I feel like I've got some gent in here and it can switch up to something totally light. And the way that Daniel's voice really shows itself off here, every style can be matched with instrumentation or sometimes the lack of needing to change the instrumentation to match the change in his voice and the way it just continues to work. I find that to be really impressive as well. Re-listening, that'll definitely be something that I uh, sort of pay attention to. Having a big song like this, transitions are really key. It felt like some really smooth ones. There was one that was right about somewhere around halfway that it just it gave me chills immediately. So having moments like that where the attention to detail has got to be you know spot on with something like this or you have a 10 minute 11 minute track where you're gonna lose some attention between and something like that can really put people off on revisiting and i don't feel like this is gonna be a problem for me to do some revisiting to of course i love the some of those bouncier moments that i'm talking about but the the really clean sounding light moments that provide a lot of contrast to like the heaviest parts of the song those parts to me are, are just as standout i think and that's really special somewhere around like the seven minute 30 second mark somewhere in there there is a a lot of this track has really cool use of synth that sort of adds to the atmosphere that i was talking about the mood of the track but in that like the seven and a half minute part where they're getting back into one of those fight scenes the use of synth there and the sort of stuttery echoey sound that you get underneath the riff outstanding so things like that moments like that kind of provide that 
thicker sound from the instrumentation, but they have the moments where it opens up and sounds very clean as well. And everything adapts to those moments incredibly well. So for me, this is going to be a huge win. There's, I really, especially looking at an 11 minute track, there's not anything that I would want different from this other than from, like I mentioned with the visuals, just wanting a little bit more of a conclusive story uh, or it to flow a little bit better than it seems to at, at points in time. The ending didn't seem super conclusive to me, and that could mean that there's another video coming. Obviously, they have an album out, so that could be just we're too early on to know the, the conclusion to this. Uh, but beyond that in a from a sonic point of view i don't have anything that i would i would say i wanted different from this track it's incredibly engaging it's 11 minutes long it takes time to time where time should be taken it does not feel rushed and that's not always like having a long song it doesn't always mean that that's going to be how it it sounds uh, it feels like each moment of the song is used well, so it also doesn't feel like, why did you make this 11 minutes? You know, sometimes I really can't get on with some of the, the there have been some closing tracks where there's like over two minutes of, whether it be dead noise or a, a longer ambient outro and stuff, I can get behind that. I understand uh, Periphery does a lot of outros that I completely get, but on some of the tracks, Boston Manor, uh, 156 Silence, those songs where the longer parts of them aren't really used up so much to where it feels necessary, that always doesn't work. That doesn't always work for me. It doesn't, sometimes it will deter me from revisiting. This is an 11 minute track that I will be putting on the playlist that I'll be doing a lot of listening to. It's a very engaging 11 minutes, so I'm not worried about that at all. I suppose at this point I'm sort of just carrying on, but there was, I, I did want to mention that run leading up to, I think the lyrics say tear the mask away or something at the part that I'm talking about it leading up to, but if you just pay attention to the vocals in that stretch there, I feel like it very, it does a good job of encapsulating kind of the variety that's shown here, and maybe I didn't pick up on how much of a range Dan has in my listening to Tesseract so far, but for me, I felt like this this track showed off range like I have not heard in some places. I haven't heard a song like this from them, that is for sure. Um, there are some phenomenal songs, too. That's not to say that there's nothing I enjoy from Tesseract. Otherwise, I would not be making this video about a new 11-minute song from them. But in terms of how much this shows off, maybe it's a great first single, I think, for this album. Because for me, I have all... I'm going to put it on my calendar now. I probably would have anyway, but unless I hated the song or something. But this has me now anticipating the record, looking for the next single, uh, because this is just outstanding. It sounds like the best form. I really like Juno, uh, so I'm hopeful that this will be the best form for them, for my liking, but uh, I, I just love that sound also. So we'll, we'll see. It's a high bar to set there. Uh, very much scratch the itch that I am not always able to from the channel. Uh, we don't do a ton of Pro, like straight up proggy stuff an 11 minute runtime especially not on stream and stuff like that um we we would but there aren't a ton of bands i don't think that do it in a, a such a special way the contortionist absolutely does they're one of my favorite bands in the world so uh, with that comes a lot of people saying tesseract tesseract um, so maybe i'll go back and, and listen to the albums again i know i worked through it it was pretty early on in my channel i think like the year I started it, maybe 2020, that I started going through Tesseract's disc discography and got through it that same year. So it wasn't a, a long time or anything like that. But a uh, new album is coming. This sounds huge. The mixing on this sounds incredible. To touch on that again, the use of synth, massive vocal performance, instrumentation to match. There are some big riffs in here, some bouncy moments. The intro too, I don't want to overlook. So much happens in that 11 minutes that it you almost forget how engaging the intro is as well. And it keeps that throughout the track, I think. And that is a very big uh, make it or break it, I think, for something like this, for what I've talked about in this video. If you start to lose people it, it may not get the replays you're hoping for. And if you're not hoping for a lot of replays, that's fine. But I think they made a, a good choice of a, obviously I haven't heard anything else off the album, but having the longest track on the album as the, the debut, not the debut, uh, as the first single to introduce people to the idea of the album. This is, this was not like a, 
a dicey choice or anything. It's a huge song, and I think that if people haven't heard of Tesseract, they're a rather big band. But if it's it's always a growing genre for us so there's always people just hearing a band for the first time no matter how big they are so people listening to tesseract for the first time or checking them out to get in at this album or something i think that this will be a a win over for them as well as i mean it, as much as you can say that obviously things are subjective and not everyone likes the same things and stuff but uh, the qualities that this brings forward in the genres that we cover on the channel and stuff. I think the the blend, the transitions, the things I've talked about with the instrumentals, having uh, enough of those, the moments that sort of slow it down and, and are lighter, but it's thick, it's bouncy. It's got a lot of standout moments uh, from instrumentation for vocals. Anyway, I'm just carrying on at this point. I'm excited for this album. This is probably my, my I think with one listen, it's a little bit bold to say, but probably my favorite Tesseract song. I think the more I listen to it, the more I'll find it within it, more details, uh, the more I'll enjoy it. So that's very promising. I will follow back up on my next video for whatever the next single is for them or with my album video in September. So let me know what you thought of the song, what your favorite Tesseract song is as well, so I can go back and listen to them and make sure uh, this is mine. I will link the music video I used in the reaction portion of this, as well as pre-orders for the album, all of Tesseract's social media and promotional links in the description of this video. Make sure to give them some love if you enjoyed this. I will also have my link tree there. That'll have my Patreon, my Discord server, my Twitch channel, all of which are getting a lot of attention lately. I've got my new background here, which is what I've been talking about. When that happens, everything will be blah, blah, blah. So my schedule has increased. More videos every day is the goal. Other than Sometimes I may take one day off a week, but we're gonna get back into Unsigned Sundays. More request streams on the channel. Tuesday, I will be resuming Tuesday, the 25th of July. So hopefully I post this video before then. Uh, but if not, then the next upcoming Tuesday should also be a request stream. I'm getting my Patreon going. I won't be doing request streams there since I do them on YouTube, but I will be using it to do different types of music streams. I have a bunch of plans, a bunch of stuff that I may have asked for people to submit answers to and stuff. All of that was based around Twitch, which I'm starting up uh, in the upcoming week or two. So if you want to follow and see when I go live and start all that up, uh, the link will be in the link tree. The Discord server is where the community is based for my YouTube channel. We've got a lot of really wonderful folks in there who love music and are having both music related and conversation completely unrelated to music as well. So if you're interested in joining the homies, that will be there. Also, my Patreon, which I'm going to be updating all the tiers to offer more content, more stuff in the next week or two as well. Same timeline ish as the Twitch streams. But everything I currently offer is listed there if you have any interest in checking that out. As always, thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it.